Today on Judge Faith, killer canine or out of control owner? She should be responsible when her dog was attacking me. She shouldn't have just sat there. As soon as I heard him growling, I jumped up to grab him, but it was already too late. She got what she deserved. She got what she deserved? She did? Really. I would expect to see more attitude from the 21-year-old in front of me, not you. And later, a catering company with a twist. I've done business ventures, and he wanted to do a business venture, so I said, I'll help you. She said, well, get a proposal together. I might know some people that might be interested in investing. Adrian told me to come up to the club and meet Mr. LaCase. Why would you set up the meeting at the Swingers Club? You know what goes on there. <laughs> Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Shelby Smith says her roommate's dog attacked her for no reason causing serious injuries. She's suing for missed work. Defendant Susan Leftwich says Shelby provoked her sweet, loving dog to attack and got what she deserved. She's counter suing for dog quarantine fees. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Smith versus Leftwich. Thank you, Juan. Shelby Smith? Yes. You are suing the defendant, Susan Lepwich? Yes. For $120 for missed work? Yes. And you are counter-suing, ma'am, for $95 for dog quarantine fees? Yes. Okay, I'll start with you, Ms. Smith. Tell me what's going on here. How do you know Ms. Lepwich? Um, well, she uh, moved into the house that we rent. Uh, every, they're roommates. We all rent a room. And she moved in six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, she, when so I... So you live in a... You, you live in a, in a house? Yeah. With other roommates? Yes. How many people live in the house? Like six. All right, go ahead. Um, when I first met her, she rubbed me the wrong way. Um, she is just very about herself. Um, Why do you say she's all about herself or selfish? Because she still hasn't taken responsibility for her dog's actions. Like, she should be responsible when her dog was attacking me. She shouldn't have just sat there. She should so have gotten So, what kind of dog do you dog. have, ma'am? He is a little shih tzu, weighs about 13 pounds, and as soon as I heard him growling, I was making potato salad, as soon as I got, heard him growling, I jumped up to grab him, but it was already too late. She got what she deserved. No. Because she obviously oh. did something to him. She did. Why, she, do you say, why do you say she got what she because deserved? Because she admitted she went into my room one day. I wasn't home. Nobody was home but my dog, and she Wait. knew my dog was in there. She, told, she said she went in my room, and I don't know what she did to him. He doesn't react like that to anybody anybody else but her. Tell me about the day that the dog bit you. What do you say happened? Um, I had went to work. I work at Walmart. I went to work and um, we just have a new outfit thing that we have to wear a collared shirt. So I had left my collared shirt at home and my son was asleep in the room. So I went through the back so I can go through the back door. Mm -hmm. And she was in the back with her dog. Um, I just walked by, went to my door and all of a sudden, her dog is like, his arms around one of my foot attacking my other one. And the dog brought me to tears. When I was done crying, I went and I told my mom, I think I should go to the doctor. Well, did she, was she, were you out there? Did you see this? Yes, I grabbed my dog as soon as he started growling. So you, well, so you saw, no. you actually yes. saw the dog run and bite her? Yes. Okay. Yes. You're, uh, let me see a picture of the dog. What's the dog's name? Gus Gus. So she didn't do anything. The dog ran up and bit her, right? Who knows what she did to her before? No, did I'm not. Before? The day this no, happened, no. she didn't do anything. She was just no. walking, and your dog ran over and bit her. Yes. Coming up, how much damage did the dog bite cause? A half hour after this happened, OK, she was in so much pain, but yet she went and got a pedicure. Do you see the, yeah, the, the see photos it. of her injuries? Yeah, I see it. Do you see the photos of her yeah. injuries? So clearly, she's not lying about the injuries, I, right? She no. was injured I as a result it. of your dog biting her. Right. And later, was the money a loan or an investment? You write and you're testifying today that you were doing all of these things for his business. You hadn't worked with him before, right? No. So you were doing all of that for no money? No money, no. Plaintiff Shelby Smith says she was unable to work for three days because of the dog bites. She's suing for missed work. Defendant Susan Leftwich says Shelby provoked the attack. She's countersuing for dog quarantine fees. How are you injured? Um, my uh, left foot 
was swollen and puncture wounds. Um, it turned purple and... Um, Let me see the photos of your injuries. That is my left Next foot. Photo. I still have the mark today. I mean, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty significant, I mean, that's a puncture wound in, in her foot. Yes, from his tooth. I'm not... You don't care? She got what she deserved? Yeah. Really? A half hour after this happened, okay, she was in so much pain, but yet yeah, she went and got a pedicure. Do you see the, yeah, the, the see photos it. of her injuries? Yeah, I see it. Do you see the photos of her yeah. injuries? So clearly she's not lying about the injuries, I, right? She no. was injured I as a result it. of your dog biting her. Right. Okay, so she's asking for, you missed work? Yes. What proof do you have that you missed work? Um, I have my doctor's note saying that I couldn't go to work, and um, like if I go to my work and ask him for the days that I missed, those two days. Let me see your evidence. This, this is what you're suing for. You have to have the evidence in court with you. Your Honor, she worked two jobs at the time, and she was rushing me out of the bathroom at, on the 17th, the day she left this note on my car, um, on what the note? 17th, because she had to get ready for work. What note? This note that she left on my car. Uh, that I owe her $120 because my dog bit her two days before that. If she missed two days of work, she wouldn't be going out to work on the 17th. She rushed me out of the bathroom on the 17th so she can get in the shower to get ready to go to her first job. Okay, so were you still going to work? Um, after the second day, I did go back to work because um, I have a three-year-old son that I have to... Okay, and this happened on, on March 15th. Yes. So why haven't you, you don't think you owe damages because you no. saw your dog run up and bite her? No. All right. I have a picture of my other foot. Okay, let me see that. Which he did not break skin on that one. Okay. That's the one he, his claws were holding my foot. Did you call animal control? No, I did not. Someone did. I had went to my doctor. They had asked me if the, doc if the dog had shots. Um, I couldn't give them an answer. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I said I didn't know, and um, they called animal control. And where's the dog now? At my house. What happened? You're suing a countersuit for home quarantine. What's yeah. that about? Uh, the animal co control came out. They checked his registration tags. They were fine. They checked his chip. They checked his shot records. Everything was good. They still made me home quarantine him. Right, because by law, they're required to do that when your dog bites a, a human being. Has he bitten anyone before? Never. You admit that your dog ran mm -hmm. over to her unprovoked and, and bit her. Um, you almost seem to take pleasure what? out of it happening. <laughs> Yeah, Which is didn't so know. odd to me. But the I thing is, screamed. dogs do not forget what happened to them. Obviously, something happened. You have, but you can't come in and say something happened prior to this that caused my dog to run over and bite her. That's not the way the law works. If your dog bites someone in your state, you are strictly liable unless you can prove at the time of the bite they did something to provoke the dog. And you just testified before me today that she didn't do anything. She was just not walking. That day. When her dog was attacking me, I screamed, and everybody in the house came out. He How old are you? 21. How old are you? 51. I would expect to see more attitude from the 21-year-old in front of me, not you. I'm defending my dog who did nothing. Your dog bit her in both of her feet. You're lucky she's not coming after you for more. Most of the time I see these cases, they're involving thousands of dollars in pain and suffering. She's suing you for $120. For work that she didn't miss. She went to work. Here's, here's what we're going to do. Your counterclaim is dismissed. I'm actually going to order you to pay her punitive damages in the amount of $500. <laughs> 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 yeah. I feel that Judge Faith was correct and that um, everything worked out perfect. She did something to my dog to provoke this attack because every time he, she, he hears her voice, he goes ballistic. He, she's the only one that he reacts to like that, ever. Plaintiff Yolanda Moore says her former friend borrowed money to open a soul food restaurant, then refused to pay her back. She's suing for an unpaid loan. She's accompanied in court today by Adrian Peebles. Defendant Derek Lacazzi Sr. says he doesn't know because the money was an investment and the business never opened. Yolanda Moore? Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant Derek Lacazzi? Yes, ma'am. For $3,000, $2,000 of that for an unpaid loan and $1,000 in interest? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll start with you, ma'am. Tell me what's going on here. Well, um, I met Mr. Lacaze, um through my ex-husband, who's my witness here today. Mm -hmm. They were 
co-partners at a, a swingers club. At a what? Swingers club. Okay. And um, Mr. Lucas. The two of you owned a swingers club in Dallas? No, they were. Um, he worked there as a manager. I was a promoter. He was, he was a, a promoter. Oh, you were a promoter. Okay. Yes. He was looking for football players for his football team, and I have. Big you had a football team too? Yes, ma'am. What kind of team? Um, youth, five you to twelve. You're promoting at a swingers club, and you're working with the youth too. <laughs> I'm promoting an event. I'm a promoter. I promote all types of events, uh, concerts, you name it. Well, what what do you do for a living? I'm a counselor. I'm a counselor and a, a caterer. Who do you counsel? Youth. <laughs> OK, go ahead. OK. <laughs> so they got to talk in football, and I have big boys. And so I was also looking for a football team. And so Adrian told me to come up to the club and meet Mr. Lequay so my boys can start playing football for him. So you met him at the Swingers Club? Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's where I met him, talked to him about my son playing football. Couldn't stay very long because I didn't like the action there. So talked to him about the football. And then... Why would you set up the meeting at the Swingers Club? You know what goes on there. I actually, I did, and I've never been to one. I've never been to one either, but I know what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I've never been, I, I never even knew what it was about. Okay. And, then what, and you say you're a caterer now, as well as I'm, a counselor. Yes, ma'am. So yes. you know that he's catering. Yes. I even purchased food from him from, like, Thanksgiving and Christmas. He would make peach cobblers, banana puddings, different things Were like that. Were you cooking the food? Yes. Was it good? Yes. It was good. Okay, no so complaint. then you hear that he wants to open up a restaurant, mm -hmm. so you think he's a good cook. Yes. And what's the conversation the two of you have? Um, we talked because I, I've done business ventures, and he wanted to do a business venture, so I said, I'll help you. What kind of business venture do you say he wanted to... The catering into business. You? What was the agreement? Not that him and I had an agreement to open up this catering business, but as far as doing like his licensing, getting set up with the state, doing different, getting his EIN, different you things like that. You were doing all of that? I helped him do that. Why yes. would you do that? Because Absolutely. he's saying that the money you're talking about is an investment because you wanted to be a part of the business. Oh, so no. you're right, and you're testifying today that you were doing all of these things for his business. You hadn't worked with him before, right? No. You no. hadn't had a business or relationship before. And then you say you also helped him look for a location yes. and acquire equipment. So why are you doing all of that if you don't see yourself as a partner in this venture? Because he said he didn't know how to, and I knew how to, because mm -hmm. I have a business, so I knew how to do So all you were of doing all of that for no money? No money. No, no. investment interest whatsoever? None whatsoever. I admired Mr. Derrick because he worked with the youth. He volunteered. Even my other son's football team was going to come and help his football team do volunteer work. So what was the discussion about the $2,000? The $2,000 that came off into the, into the, uh, to the picture when I was uh, looking for a building because the catering was going so well that I decided that, you know, I want to get into a building because I have so, so many customers. I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I don't have the funds right now to even get started. Mm -hmm. That's really what, I, what I want. I have some, but I don't have uh, what I need. So she said, well, get a proposal together. I might know some people that may be interested in, in investing. So that's... What about the $2,000 that she gave you? What was the exact conversation about that $2,000? The $2,000 came to effect after all of that had went back and forth. She was like, well, okay, I can invest up to $2,000. And my deal was, I, you know, I could, on the return, return I could double that $2,000. So you agreed that she would give you 2000 and based on what would you be able to double the money? I just was based on the simple fact that the amount of customers that I had and the amount of money that I was... Uh... So you would double the return on her investment? Right. Did he agree to pay you back $4,000, double uh, your money? Yes, I, I have it in text messages where he agreed to... And I said, Derek, that's not how you do business. You're going to waste money trying to pay me back. But you want him to pay you 50% in interest, $2,000 well, $2, alone and $1,000 okay. in interest. Okay, that's what I'm going to get to. He agreed... He that's not how I... you do business either. That's, that's against usury law. <laughs> Coming up on Judge Faith, the guys bump heads. What did you use the two thousand dollars for? I to to, to do the um the the. the... He lying. He's stuttering. See, now I, I don't even know why he's here. Plaintiff Yolanda Moore says Derek borrowed money, then refused to pay her back. She's suing for an unpaid loan. Defendant Derek Lacazzi Sr. says he doesn't owe because the money was an investment. Do you have a copy of the check you gave him? I sure yeah, do. I see it. And so what happens to the restaurant? Did, did you ever open it? I, I, 
I... What are you handing me? The, 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 I actually got the, the location. Okay. Did and you open the restaurant? I did not open the restaurant. Okay. So what happened to the money? What did you use the $2,000 for? I, to, to, to do the, um, the, the, this... He lying, he's stuttering. <laughs> See, now, I, I don't even know why he's here for the first place. <laughs> Because, because, because I, I want to get hold on, money. guys. I'm her ex-husband. He's her ex-husband, but he was nowhere and in the I picture. Have... Okay, hold on a second. I asked him who he, he was. He and cheated on her. She asked me to get involved because he wasn't paying her back. Mm -hmm. So we started Facebook and messaging back and forth, and he even missed that it was a loan. Okay, but I actually didn't get an answer to my question. I, my question to you... I received Hold a on tip. a second. Okay. My question to you is, what did you do with the $2,000? I bought equipment to go inside of the restaurant. What happened to the equipment? I still have it. Okay. And the I, I'm looking at the check and on the memo line it says investment mm -hmm. to be repaid. Yes. So is this an investment? Are you investing in the company and you expect to get repaid from the profit of the company? Or are you loaning him money? I was loaning you're him you're walking money. it you're walking that thin line. Yeah, because you know what, when we were outside. It, 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 it really is an oxymoron. What do you have to say, sir? What the do money, you know? The money is, is that he states that he borrowed the money and he has every intentions on paying her back. But well, where is he a witness proof at? right here. Let me see the text messages. So the two of you then had a conversation. We did have a conversation. Okay, a three did you month say long conversation. Three months? Three months. Look at the dates. <laughs> you do say I have every intention of paying her, but I right now am out of pocket in over twenty one thousand dollars. What are see, you talking see, about? See if uh, if they're the same, because these are emails that that was between me and him, the conversation. Right, but I just actually, I'm looking at your evidence that you submitted to court. I okay. looked at his, and now I'm looking at yours. Okay, yes, ma'am. And you submitted evidence where you tell him and her, I guess this is a Facebook message, mm -hmm. that you have every intention on paying, but you're facing right now a court case, and, and you've spent over $21,000. What true. are you talking about? That's true. I, had a, I, I was dealing with a, a case, but... Look at me, sir. You're looking all around. Okay. I want you to look at me. I was dealing with the case. My... Is that an open case? It's closed. It's, it's closed. It's, everything is, is done. You told her here that it, the money was an investment and that you both took a loss on it. it. It seems that you go back and forth with promising to pay and then going and saying it's an investment that you both took a loss on. All right, what happens next? She started talking to me about, you know, possibly taking him to court. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I said, well, you're probably not going to get your money, like I told you before, not to do business with him. He doesn't pay people back. Mm -hmm. I said, he even owes me money. And he decided to stop coming to the club and promoting the club. And yeah. what's your position at the club? I was a manager. You're managing, okay. Mm -hmm. Not a participant. <laughs> just want to make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to pass judgment, sir. I'm just here to listen to the case. Coming up, Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do because I've looked at I've looked at enough evidence now. Mm -hmm. I think that legally you walked a very thin line with mm -hmm. this money in terms of whether it's an investment that you just lost or whether this was a straight loan. Because when I put the money to the side and I just look at your actions, it looks like this is someone that you're trying to go into business with. Mm -hmm. But when I look at all of the messages between the two of you and he had lengthy conversations with you over a long period of time. I mean, this was now going on a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And the messages that you had uh, with her, it looks like from the very beginning, you told her that you would definitely pay her this money back from day one. So in the interest of justice, I think that she did give you this money with the expectation from the very beginning that she would be paid back. And, I, and so you can call it an investment on your check, but I do think that the intent of the parties was, was that this money was a loan and that she expected to be paid back. I'm not going to order him to pay you $1,000 in interest. Mm -hmm. By law, I can't yeah, order that. That's fine. But I want to order you to pay the $2,000 that I think you borrowed, sir. Just before the play of $2,000. All right, what I take from it is the fact that uh, Communication. Better communication when doing business. I'll never go to a swingers club again. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.